Hendrik is a professor of mathematical physics and the leader of the Center for Complexity Science at the Imperial College London. He has contributed greatly in research across physics, biology, economics, and finance, with an emphasis on coevolution and network dynamics. Please welcome Hendrik Jensen. Thank you very much. So I'm, we're actually going to return to Whitehead. So it's very appropriate to come right after the previous talk. So um, I'll use my manuscript and try to take six minutes and 38 seconds. Uh, I want to remind you that complex designs is much more than cross-disciplinary research. In order to do this, I ask you to keep in mind the fact that the world consists of open-ended hierarchies of processes as depicted to the right here behind me. You can go in at any level of reality and what you find are towers of nested processes. Processes between cells creates organisms, Processes between people creates societies, and so on. So that's our world. It consists at the deepest ontological level of processes, not of things. And so why is that of importance? Because, I need to push, here we are, in a world consisting of stacks of hierarchically ordered processes, complexity science is our most promising tool to find our way. Complexity science is at once the most applied and the most fundamental of sciences as it endeavors to understand the natural laws across the many different levels of processes. It is applied because we develop complexity science through collaborative efforts that helps us to improve our understanding of some of the most urgent problems we are facing, so climate, cities, finance, the mind, and so on. Complexity science is fundamental because the aim of complexity science is to develop concepts, language, formalism, that can help us to understand the most basic and most commonly shared aspects of the dynamics of systems, so that is dynamics of hierarchical processes. There are strong similarities between the compl what complexity science tries to achieve today and what Boltzmann and others were developing <coughs> in statistical mechanics around 1900, not least here in Vienna. So let's think a little more about what complexity science does. Any science wants to understand its subject matter. It collects data and tries to comprehend the data through model construction. Complexity sees the dynamics of interrelated processes as its subject matter. So it looks for the shared common behaviors between totally different parts of the world. This is why complexity science is eager to enter into collaborations with subfields such as finance, economics, neuroscience, and so on. The complexity scientists want to contribute to a subfield like neuroscience, but also believes that important general lessons can be learned when neuroscience is viewed as one specific example of interaction processes. For example, by investigating neuroscience, we may learn general lessons about, say, how emergence work, what synergy really is, how coevolution influences the stability of the processes, and so on. To clarify how general laws might exist across so diverse fields as ecology, economics, brain science, let us spend a moment on thinking about building blocks. Assume the world simply consists of different systems, things composed by putting different types of Lego blocks together. Then it is natural to think that the collection of Lego blocks forming the financial system may have little in common with the collection of different shaped Lego blocks forming, say, an ecosystem. But in a world of layers of interaction processes, it's very different. The collective behavior of co-evolving processes may be governed by layers that act across very different systems and scales, and therefore you can expect common behaviors in very different systems. Now let us return to the hierarchical structure depicted on the first slide. Here it is, as you can see. To the left 
is a stereotypical representation of the structure as seen from the various subfields. Each subject field is interested in a specific component at a certain level of the structure. <coughs> cell biology focuses on the internal workings of the cell, psychology of the dynamics of the human mind, and one might not expect the two fields to share much. To the right is what complexity science sees, namely interrelated processes. The properties of the building blocks at a given level are downtoned, and therefore just represented by a phi, in order to focus on how the interdependence between the building blocks work. The focus is shifted from the processes inside the components to the processes between the components. The inside at one level is the between of the level below. This shift in focus may allow us to identify general aspects of emerging dynamics. So, an example, for instance, think of scaling properties across species as developed, for example, by Jeffrey West and his co-workers, or think of similarities in the excitation dynamics of the brain and rain showers, as pointed out, at, out by Dante Shalva and his collaborators. Well, this isn't entirely a new way of looking at the world. Many will, of course, remember and know that Aristotle held the view that the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. Some may know that Karl Marx stressed that merely quantitative reference beyond a certain point pass into qualitative changes. And physicists in particular probably recall that Phil Anderson <coughs> said more is different. Perhaps the most concrete way of formulating this is the way Niels Bohr did. The wetness of water emerges out of the proper combination of hydrogen and oxygen and cannot in principle be found or predicted by analyzing these chemicals individually. <clears throat> so far, this is perhaps too general. Has complexity science actually, in some concrete ways, opened our eyes? Yes, indeed. Think, for example, of self-organizing dynamics, a typical concept emphasized by complexity science. We now know much more about how self-organization works and what it can do. For example, lead to self-similarity, instabilities, and intermittencies in very different systems. Some might still say, yes, yes, this is all very well, but where do we see that complexity science has actually helped us to better understand some real world problems? And as an answer to this question, up here at random, three items where complexity science is involved. So neuroscience, self-similarity understands the brain dynamics in a very different way from the old traditional Rotman brain consisting of specialized, well-defined functional regions. Or solar and astrophysics, complexity science contributed the focus on scaling laws and broad event distributions. Or very recently, in cancer, tumor growth, and cell type diversity during the last very few years, I think the new focus on the importance of co-evolution and self-organization is partly due to complexity science. So in conclusion, we need to continue to have some focus on the fundamental aspects of complex designs. The situation can perhaps be compared to mathematics. There is an infinity of extremely important applications of mathematics, but still we need also to study mathematics at the pure level. We need to allow some part of complex designs to focus on the basics and to develop abstract, abstract general concepts and methodology. The laws of emergence are still emerging. Thank you. <laughs>